Mom, I am not feeling well. I have a cough and cold. Oh, where did you catch it from? Do any of your friends have a cold? You might have got it from them. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe how diseases are transmitted, list the principles of treatment, and list the principles of the prevention of diseases. Mom, how exactly do infectious diseases spread? Diseases spread through microbial organisms. Microbial organisms are transmitted from an infected person to a healthy person through direct contact. Air, water, food, mosquitoes and other animals. The chances of getting infected by airborne diseases depends on how close we are to the infected person. In closed areas, the droplet nuclei recirculate and pose a risk to all. Overcrowded and poorly ventilated housing is a main factor in the spread of airborne diseases like common cold, pneumonia and tuberculosis. Diseases can also spread through water. When the excreta of animals and humans suffering from infectious diseases get mixed with drinking water, it becomes contaminated. This kind of water is not healthy for drinking. Cholera, for instance, is a waterborne disease. Close physical contact is another way of spreading diseases. Syphilis and AIDS are transmitted by sexual contact. However, these diseases are not transmitted through casual physical contact like a handshake or a hug. Is sexual contact the only way of spreading AIDS? Other than sexual contact, the AIDS virus is also transmitted from an infected mother to her child during pregnancy or through breastfeeding. It can also spread by transferring the blood of an infected person to a healthy person. Diseases also spread through animals. Some animals carry the infecting agents from a sick person to a healthy person. These animals are called vectors. The most common vectors are mosquitoes, dogs, etc. Female mosquitoes, for instance, act as vectors and transfer the microorganisms from one human to another. They need nutritious food in the form of blood to release eggs. So, these mosquitoes feed on warm-blooded animals like human beings. Animals like dogs and cats transfer the rabies virus when they bite human beings. Mom, are there any common effects of infectious diseases? The first common effect is that the body's immune system is activated in response to infection. The group of cells and organs that protect the body from foreign invaders is called the immune system. The second effect is the severity of the disease, which depends on the number of microorganisms in the body. The immune system is the main factor that decides the number of microorganisms in the body. The third effect is inflammation. An active immune system recruits many cells to the affected tissue to kill the infectious agents. This process is called inflammation. 
some local effects are swelling and pain. And a general effect is fever, which is caused by inflammation. How are infectious diseases treated? There are two different ways to treat infectious diseases. The first is to reduce the effects of the disease, also called as symptom-based treatment. And the second way is to eliminate the cause of the disease. Is a symptom-based treatment enough to get rid of an infectious disease? Not completely. We have to eliminate the causative agents, namely microbes from our body. The different types of microbes like viruses, bacteria, fungi or protozoa have a particular biochemical life process which is different from other groups. So we have to take medicine according to the type of microbe by which we are affected. For example, some bacteria make cell walls to protect themselves. The antibiotic penicillin blocks the cell wall synthesis. As a result, bacteria are unable to make cell walls and they die. Antiviral drugs are meant for treating viral diseases. Antiviral drugs are difficult to prepare as compared to antibacterial drugs because viruses are unique in the sense that they grow only inside the host and keep on changing their form during the different stages of life. Similarly, some drugs kill protozoa such as the malarial parasite. There are some problems faced in the treatment of infectious diseases. The first is that once someone has a disease, their body functions are damaged and may never recover completely. Secondly, the treatment may take time to take effect. Finally, the infected person serves as the source from which the infection may spread to other people. This is why prevention of diseases is better than the cure. Mom, how can we prevent infectious diseases? Airborne microorganisms can be prevented by providing living conditions which are not overcrowded. Waterborne microorganisms can be prevented by providing clean drinking water. Vector-borne diseases can be prevented by keeping our surroundings clean. This will not allow mosquitoes to breed. Public hygiene is a basic step to prevent infectious diseases. Mom, I have a doubt. One of my schoolmates was suffering from a cough and cold last week. Why weren't all the people around him getting the same infectious disease? This happens because the immune system of our body is fighting against the microorganisms. The human body has some cells specialized in fighting with the microbes. These cells fight with the microbes as soon as it enters the body. If these cells are successful, we may not be infected by a disease. If the number of microbes can be controlled by immune cells, the symptoms of illness will be minor. So, the chance to get an infectious disease depends on how efficient our immune system is. Yes. Proper and sufficient food is necessary for the immune system to work properly. Therefore, the second basic principle of prevention of infectious diseases is the availability of proper and sufficient food for everybody. 
Mom, I have heard that a person who is infected by chickenpox won't get the disease again. Is that true? That is correct. This happens because once we get an infection, our body cells react against it and remember it, particularly by producing memory cells. These memory cells exist in the body. So, when the same microbe enters our body next time, the memory cells fight it with more efficiency. This eliminates the infection faster than the first time. Can we overcome diseases like chickenpox prior to its entry into the body? There is the immunization process that prevents the growth of microbes and protects us. This is the third basic principle of prevention of infectious diseases. Immunization is the protection of individuals from communicable diseases by administration of a suspension of killed microorganisms. Let's see how the immunization came into existence. A hundred years ago, smallpox epidemics were common throughout the world. People were scared of catching the disease from the patient. People who already suffered from the disease provided nursing care for the victims of smallpox as they were not likely to catch the disease again. We already know that if a person has smallpox once, there is very little chance of suffering from it again. Remember, I said this happens because when the immune system first encounters an infectious microbe, it responds against it and remembers it specifically by producing memory cells. However, you can prevent a virus like smallpox from infecting you the first time through vaccinations. In this process, foreign dead smallpox virus is injected into the body as a suspension. This is called a vaccine. The first vaccine was developed against smallpox by Edward Jenner and smallpox was completely eradicated. So, Edward Jenner was called the father of immunology. There are many vaccines available that provide a means of prevention. There are vaccines against polio, whooping cough, tetanus, etc.